So we give them some tools to make sure. And here's footwork pattern tools that I have. Back up just a little bit for me. So first thing I, I teach is a three-step footwork pattern to the right. She goes shuffle and pass. That's great. And to the left, shuffle and pass. Because I'd like my athlete in the ideal world to be quiet and frozen as they're passing the ball. How come? Because if the body's moving, the head's moving. If the head's moving, what else is moving? The eyes. And because the vision is the most important thing in passing, and we always, I use this silly uh, joke all the time. In real estate, the three most important things are? Location, location, location. In passing, the three most important things are? Vision, vision, and vision, yes? so. We give them tools to be able to do this. And these are footwork tools. And I want their head quiet so that their eyes are quiet. We never watch a baseball hitter standing in the batter's box and doing this. He'd strike out every time. He doesn't want his head moving. It's as quiet as possible to keep it on the same plane in the ideal world. We want that here. Now, the unpredictable path of the ball may challenge you sometimes on that. But whenever possible, we want the athlete to be grounded, quiet, and stopped whenever possible. We also have what drop step side shuffle. Drop step is a basketball terminology. It's a 90 degree pivot, do one, yes, and then put the shuffle on top of it. Beautiful, and if the athlete starts at the proper depth, which I believe is around the 22 foot line, so back up a little bit more, stop. Now do drop step side shuffle. Now do an explosive one where you get your right foot out of bounds. Good, the athlete in three steps very rapidly can get all the way to the end line, and now not only are they able to play a ball at a reasonable elevation, without having to play it too high, but they also have better judgment for two reasons about whether that ball is in or out. One is peripherally, even though they're tracking the ball, they have a feel of where the end line is to let it go at the last second. Uh, and the other one is they've given themselves a little bit more time. We always say to our athletes, um, run the ball out of bounds and decide late. You can't decide late if you stay at the 22 foot line. So by backing up, the athlete allows themselves the luxury of deciding late. So drop, step, side, shuffle. Good, that's very nice. And to the other side, drop, step, side, shuffle. Three steps and she's got it done. We also have the ball that looks normal, looks normal, looks normal, looks normal. At the last second, it dies. So we break out what we call a lunge step for that. This is only a single step. And it's for her to nice job with a nice long one as I challenged her. And so now I can do a little game with her. And this is a little drill that I do to give the athletes a chance to practice this in a random scenario, because she knew ahead of time she was gonna do lunge step. So before I do that, I'm gonna teach you one more, which is called removing center line, and these are all this side past the ball. Ball's coming rapidly at her, and at the last second, she realizes she's gonna get jammed by the ball. She's gonna take her spine to the lateral side away, arch your back, and find the ball in her sweet spot. Passing is about two things. We ask ourselves two questions every time. Did the ball hit me on the sweet spot? It's question number one for a reason. If we don't get a yes answer to question number one, we don't ask the second question. Nothing else matters. Did the ball hit me in the sweet spot? If the answer is yes, then I ask question number two. Was my sweet spot aimed at target? If I get the answer, yes answers to both of those, in 99% of the scenarios, we're gonna get a perfect pass. Sweet spot and sweet spot aimed at target. So, removing center line. This is a tool we use for getting jammed. She goes lateral away from the ball. 